let us start lecture 26, uh, the course is corrosion protection methods. We have been discussing on the effect of environmental factors and associated corrosion protection. And we are discussing uh, uh, effect of chloride on uh, uh, passivating metals. So, we saw two uh, aspects, uh, one is uh, uh, effect of chloride on the change in transpassive potential as well as we have also seen the effect of chloride on the change in I passive which is the current density corresponding to the passive uh, zone. Now, we have to also see the effect of chloride ions on the I critical which is the current density corresponding to the extreme point in the active passive anodic part of a metal. Now, let us look at that aspect. See, if we see chloride ion effect, we have seen the plot looks like this. This is E volt log I, let us say ampere per centimeter square. This is uh, uh, the anodic part of active passive metal. So, what will be the influence on the concentration of chloride ion as we increase the chloride ion concentration? So, this, this potential corresponding to E t transpassive potential, this point is I passive, this point is I critical. So, I critical goes up, I passive increases, transpassive potential decreases as we increase chloride ion concentration. So, that was the observation. Now, we have understood uh, uh, the uh, effect of E t as well as I p due to the presence of chloride ion on the corrosion rate of uh, the active passive metal. And in both the cases, we have seen that uh, chloride ion actually degraced, degrades the uh, metal and the corrosion rate increases. Now, we have to also see what could be the, uh, the way we have seen that the I critical increases and what could happen to the active passive metal if I critical increases. Now, if we look at the mixed potential theory and corresponding anodic plot of active passive metal. let us say this is E volt log I ampere per centimeter square. So, this is the typical anodic part of active passive metal corresponding points are I p, I critical and this is E t and we are looking at, so we have seen three aspects, one is on E t, we have done it in our previous class on I p that is also discussed in our previous lecture. So, we are looking at on I critical and corresponding corrosion rate influence or effect on corrosion rate. So, we are looking at this point. So, now if we 
have chloride ion let us say this is for the condition of no chloride ion presence. Now, if we have chloride ion the graph would move towards forward direction. So, let us say it moves like this. Okay. This will be the pattern of the active passive uh, anodic part of the metal. Now, I critical has moved to this location. And what is the importance of I critical? So, I critical is the maximum point in the active passive anodic part before the metal achieves passivity. Now, as per mixed potential theory, let us say this is the the cathodic part. So, this particular polarization is corresponding to corresponding to I C, it is the cathodic current density. And corresponding point is E cathode, E equilibrium for cathodic and this is I naught for cathodic reaction on the metal surface. This is the uh, reduction process that is going on. Now, this two plots that green one as well as the black one if we consider these two plots are there and as per mixed potential theory an unique potential is achieved where the total rate of cathodic reaction is equal to total rate of anodic reaction. And since we have here we have a very simple system where one single anodic process which is metal dissolution. So, let us say this actually indicates this indicates metal dissolution and this indicates reduction or we can say oxidant plus N E equal to reductant. So, this ox and red is nothing but oxidant or in brief it is known as ox and reductant in brief it is red an oxidant example fe3 plus o2 copper 2 plus even hydrogen plus and reductant fe2 plus h2o or even oh minus copper hydrogen. So, these are reductant. Now, for in case of hydrogen if we consider this would be written as ok. So, this reduction process is going on. Now, since it is only a single reduction and single cathodic process and single oxidation or single anodic process and we have to see where we are finding a point where both the anodic and cathodic reaction rates are same. And in this case the green line which is the polarization line for cathodic reaction or cathodic process is has crossed the I critical. So, this particular point if you see it has crossed it. So, once it crossed it and I could see that this is the point where I C is equal to I A and I A is nothing but anodic rate and I C is nothing, nothing but cathodic rate. Okay. Now, both these processes would try to as if like try to push each other towards this point. So, that means for the cathodic process 
the potential will drop to this particular point and for anodic process if it is starting from here which is corresponding to, to E equilibrium for anodic process and this is I 0 which is exchange current density for the metal one on metal surface. Okay. So, these two equilibrium potentials they will be taken to this potential which is E core. Fine. So, now you could see that the anodic process is having anodic polarization and the over voltage would be this much, this much would be over voltage and for the cathodic process the over voltage amount is this much. Okay. So, we could see that the potential is dragged to this point where total rate of anodic rate and cathodic rate those two are equal and the potential is lying in between these two extreme equilibrium points. Now, this is the concept we follow in case of mixed potential theory. So, if you want to understand more on this, please look into the mixed potential theory what has been explained in our previous lecture series. Now, for this kind of situation, as the potential of the anodic part is dragged to this value to this value to this value. So, it will not go like randomly like from here to there, it will follow this track, it will follow this track. It will follow this track. Similarly, for the cathodic one, it will follow this track okay. and then it goes to meet both of them and meets a uh, meet at this point where I critical which is corresponding to E core and there is that, that is the mixed potential and here total rate of anodic and cathodic processes are same. Now, since this anodic part going through this track, this track, okay, so it has to first cross this extreme point which is I critical, which is I critical, that point needs to be crossed. So, in this case, because the cathodic line is away from which is not touching the I critical and it is on the right side of I critical, it will follow this track and reach to E corrosion without any problem. Fine. Now, this situation would have been different had it been the cathodic process cuts like this, this particular line if it is the cathodic process. If it is then this, then I am seeing that three locations I meet the mixed potential theory. One location is this one, another one is this one, another one is this one. In that case, the system would like to stay at this point, at this location. Okay. So, uh, the system would not reach to the I passive because in case of point corresponding to this, I have E core as well as the corrosion current density would correspond to would corresponding correspond to I p which is the passive current density which is very low and if the system will achieve passivity. So, for the case in case of the blue line for the cathodic process sorry green line for the cathodic process definitely I will achieve passivity and the anodic line will follow the red line and then reach to mixed potential. But in case of brown line this particular case this particular case the system would not be able to achieve passivity because it is not crossing the critical. So, this particular line it is not crossing this particular point. Okay. So, this I critical point. So, it will not achieve passivity. So, what will be the polarization response if you want to do a dynamic polarization? So, in case of this E core as well as I core the typical plot pattern would be like this.
okay. So, this is for E chord and I can draw this line, this is I p or equal to I chord corresponding to green and black lines. Now, when it is brown one, that case the polarization plot would look like like this. This is for the brown and back lines fine. So, this particular situation is called cathodic loop. So, that would not achieve a stable passivity and system will fluctuate. So, this is not good for the metal. So, it can it would remain at this location, at this location. So, this is my E chord and this will be my I chord, which is corresponding to this point, fine. So, which is a very high rate of dissolution. And you could see that all those three points junction between the black and the brown one are actually having similar I C, that means the cathodic current density and same anodic current density, now all three points we meet the mixed potential theory, but the system would remain at the lower potential value or this potential value because the system is trying to achieve passivity. So, then it would remain there, but if we forcefully take it upward the way we do in case of polarization study at the in the laboratory scale with the help of potential stat that time I can get this kind of plot fine. So, it is very important that the cathodic line should cross the I critical point. If it does not cross the I critical point and if we start with a fresh metal that means, it does not have any passive layer on top of it or oxide layer on top of it and then definitely the attainment of stable passivity would be better in case of the situation where cathodic line crosses the uh, just bypasses the I critical value. Now, interestingly coming to the situation where we have chloride ion, so which is the blue one. So, let me just remove those brown curves, so that it becomes easy for us to explain. Okay. Now, this blue one corresponds to having chloride ion. So, that is what the the entire anodic plot has moved towards the right and I critical has gone up. Now, if we consider the same green line as the cathodic reaction or cathodic process that is going on, I could see that though it bypasses the I critical for the black one with the what is the that is that is the condition corresponding to no chloride ion, but that one would not cross the or would not bypass the I critical when there is chloride ion. And definitely in that case stable passivity would not be achieved just like how we have gotten the cathodic loop. Here also we will get cathodic loop because I could see mixed potential can be possible at these three locations where the total rate of cathodic process reaction as well as anodic reactions all both these rea reaction rates are same or other way we can say I cathodic equal to I anodic at those three locations. Similar like what we have received what we have obtained in case of the brown line cutting the black line and we got a cathodic loop when we did polarization study. So, that means in case of presence of chloride ion I could see that the I critical moves towards right and if the same cathodic process is going on, 
I will not get any passivity. So, for that is bad for the system and for active passive metal our primary interest would be to achieve passivity. So, that the metal remains inactive or the rate of dissolution would be so low corresponding to I passive. Okay? As we see that I passive is nothing but the I core, but that would not be achieved. So, that means it is definitely affecting the metal corrosion rate and the corrosion rate would go up enormously. Okay? So, that is the uh, uh, disadvantage of having chloride ion for the corrosion of metals and alloys. So, now question is in this case we have seen that the IP is also changing. So, that means it is a combined effect, but we can assume that this particular line can actually move towards it can remain same as same as uh, let us say other factors are not changing. E t remain same, I p remain same, only thing is I am seeing that I critical, I see this I critical is going up. So, that means the plot would be like this. So, I critical only the, the pink one, the pink line corresponds to uh, only the effect on I critical, this is a kind of hypothetical situation, only I critical is enhanced, I p does not change as well as E t does not change. So, then again also at that case also I could see that I will not be able to achieve passivity because the cathodic line corresponding to cathodic polarization would not take the metal to the I passive zone because before that it has to cross two points which is this point and this point and system would not be able to reach to I passive. So, this is a this is affecting the corrosion resistance of the metal badly because we have a very high corrosion rate corresponding to this particular I core. And if we see the this I core and I core had it achieved passivity, there is a huge increase in corrosion current density. And this is the case with, with chloride and this is chloride ion is absent. So, this is what we wanted to explain why chloride ion affects the passivity achievement or passivity attainment in case of active passive metals and this affects negatively that means, passivity attainment would be difficult. So, now coming to the protection part if we have active passive metal and if we somehow get rid of chloride ion definitely I will not have such situations I can easily get passivity corresponding to passive zone or the I passive. So, removal of chloride ion helps attainment of passivity ok. So, this is one way for the protection, okay. you remove chloride ion. So, that is what we initially said that if we remove corrosives or the ions which help corrosion. Okay. So, this is one protection that is what it is better to remove chloride ion. For example, in some cases you cannot remove chloride ion. Okay. For example, if you are using a system with uh, uh, where say metal in uh, uh, sea water application. So, that chloride ion of course, will be present, but the situation where there is a possibility of removal of chloride ion and there is a system where chloride ion presence even in a small amount would affect the corrosion rate hugely or rather increase the corrosion rate or avoids or prevents passivity attainment that case it is better to remove chloride ion. Fine. So, now let us look at one more instance where we talk about removal of oxidizer. or oxidant and what are the strong oxidant? Let us say a p 3 plus. So, if we 
consider HCl an iron container is there. So, this we have iron container then HCl if it is impure when it is impure that time we can have Fe 3 plus little bit a very small percentage of Fe 3 plus what could be the influence we can explain this with the help of mixed potential theory. So, now we can draw a plot between log i and I we know that if it is uh, dilute HCl iron does not go to passivity and let us say this is deaerated by HCl. Deaerated means dissolve oxygen is not there. So, the condition is we have HCl, we have Fe3 plus and no uh, oxygen. So, that case it will follow active dissolution and the iron would not show any passivity. So, this is my anodic plot for the iron dissolution and let us say this is my cathodic plot when we do not have Fe 3 plus. So, this potential is E equilibrium for hydrogen reaction let us say cathodic and let me put it hydrogen. So, this corresponds to H 2 for that case this is my equilibrium depending on the concentration of H plus this potential will be decided. Let us see let us explain this we have been talking about E equilibrium all the time. Let us see what is the importance of this or how it appears. In fact, uh, for these you can also follow earlier lecture series. Now, for hydrogen reaction this reaction I can write the Nernst equation like this. Okay. So, this is the equation I can think of where and this is temperature is 25 degree Celsius 1 atmosphere pressure and where E naught H plus half H 2 equal to 0. So, E equal to nothing but minus 0 0.059 pH. Now, if we maintain pH at 0, so then this value would be equal to E naught and this value is the equilibrium line equilibrium potential when the pH is 0. If pH is 1, then E H plus half H 2 would be equal to minus 0 0.059 volt. Okay. So, this is my equilibrium potential and how it appears because when we talk about hydrogen reaction when equilibrium achieves this rate and this rate both are same. So, I c equal to I a and I c is given a negative sign because this particular direction of current we are talking about that direction of current is opposite to I A and when these two are equal. So, I can say I A if I consider the magnitude that become I naught which is the exchange current density this is exchange current density. Fine. So, now when we achieve this equilibrium that time there is no net gain of hydrogen gas or there is no net gain of H plus ion. So, that is basically a non corroding case situation non corroding means the corrosion is a constant loss of metal, but here 
why it is we are saying non corroding because there is no net change of hydrogen ion or H2 gas or H2 molecule. Okay. So, that is what it is a non corroding condition and it also corresponds to equilibrium. So, that is what we are always writing that equilibrium and this junction point where cathodic and anodic half cell reactions for hydrogen reaction uh, meets. Okay. So, this is my reaction corresponds to H this and this is basically nothing but H plus plus E equal to H. Okay. So, uh, we have anodic process and cathodic process and this is for single half cell reaction where you have cathodic as well as anodic process. And this particular point corresponds to I naught for hydrogen and always the reaction happens on a metal surface. So, that is the metal and here it is iron. So, I can put it as iron because on iron surface hydrogen evolution takes place and this corresponds to E equilibrium for iron and this corresponds to I naught for iron on iron surface. And as per mixed potential theory, when we do not have F E 3 plus, then the potential will be taken from this is my E core, this will be taken to this value, this will be taken to this value and they will meet at this point and corresponding point is I core. Okay. I could see that the corrosion rate of iron follows that particular rate which is I core. Now, if we add Fe 3 plus. So, Fe 3 plus is a strong oxidant and if we consider the uh, standard reduction potential for hydrogen as well as Fe 2 plus Fe 3 plus to Fe 2 plus. So, E not Fe 3 plus to Fe 2 plus its value at 25 degree Celsius and one atmosphere pressure is 0 0.77 volt. Whereas, E naught hydrogen is equal to 0 volt. This is the standard value. So, that means I could see that Fe 3 plus plus electron equal to Fe 2 plus compared to H plus plus E equal to half H 2 this one Fe 3 plus has got a much higher reduction ability compared to H plus ion. And this potential also equilibrium potential also lies above E naught H plus slash half H 2. And every time we are talking about reduction potential, remember our convention always remains reduction. Now, if we have Fe 3 plus and Fe 2 plus, this Fe 3 plus going to Fe 2 plus that reduction process can happen. And where it would happen? it would happen on the metal surface which is nothing but iron and this potential also lies above it. Depending on the concentration of Fe 3 plus and Fe 2 plus, this particular potential or equilibrium potential as per Nernst equation equal to E naught Fe 3 plus Fe 2 plus plus Rt since we have one electron. So, F which is one Faraday ln concentration of Fe 3 plus divided by concentration of Fe 2 plus. Okay. So, depending on the concentration of Fe 3 plus and Fe 2 plus, I would have this is my equilibrium potential. Okay, equilibrium potential. So, now this equilibrium potential lies above this potential. So, when it lies here, let us say it is lying at this location. So, what happens? I think still I will have problem to draw it. Let me say it is lying here. Now, it will have its own polarization. Okay. So, when we do that polarization, this is basically corresponding polarization for Fe 3 plus going to Fe 2 plus and the current density corresponding to Fe 3 plus F e 2 plus. So, let me just put it as I c F e 3 plus, okay. the cathodic current density corresponding to polarization of F e 3 plus going to 
F e 2 plus. As per mixed potential theory, before it crosses this anodic line for the iron dissolution and here iron dissolution is taking place, this is the anodic part F e minus 2 equal to F e 2 plus. If it, uh, if it experiences another cathodic process, so in order to fulfill the mixed potential theory which says that the total rate of reduction process should be equal to the total rate of anodic process and here we have two reduction and one anodic process or one oxidation process. So, that means this line corresponding to this, this which is the equilibrium potential for the hydrogen evolution reaction. So, when the polarization happens for Fe 3 plus to Fe 2 plus, it experiences another cathodic process. So, it is to be added up. So, that we can have a mixed potential where the total rate of reduction that means the I c corresponding to hydrogen evolution and I c corresponding to Fe 3 plus reduction, these two if we add it up that current density should be equal to I a for the iron dissolution from the iron plate. So, it comes and then it adds up there, it adds up and then follows the trend. So, this line is nothing but I c total equal to I c for hydrogen evolution, I c for this is I c for hydrogen evolution, this is I c for F e 3 plus reduction. So, this is the total and this particular line corresponds to I a iron dissolution and this is the junction point where the rate of total reduction process is equal to the rate of total anodic process. So, this will be my new mixed corrosion potential and this particular point would be I core. Okay. Now, we could see that when we have iron presence Fe 3 plus presence and since it is a strong reduction oxidant, so it has a higher ability to get oxidized. So, that time I could see the current density where it was there was no Fe 3 plus no F e 3 plus and where we have with F e 3 plus the current density goes it actually increases and this increase is happening because of the presence of oxidizer. So, now if we can remove oxidizer which is F e 3 plus definitely I will have benefit of very low corrosion rate which corresponds to this point which is of which is the corrosion rate corresponding to no oxidizer. So, that is why removal of oxidizer helps for active metals fine. This also has influence on the passive metal. So, we will talk about that. In fact, presence of oxidizer actually helps in achieving stable passivity instead of going for active dissolution mode. So, we will talk about that part in our next lecture, but if we consider only the iron Fe 3 plus of course, we are not putting this other reactions. So, this reaction is this. So, this is my E equilibrium F e 3 plus and this is I c F e 3 plus on iron surface because this reaction is also happening on the iron surface and this is nothing but F e 2 plus minus electron equal to F e 3 plus which is oxidation reaction or anodic process for the single half cell reaction which is nothing but Fe 3 plus slash Fe 2 plus. So, now we could see that we could see that if we remove oxidant just like what we have given this example let us say iron 3 plus we can actually reduce corrosion rate or other way it enhances corrosion resistance 
and remember this is valid for active dissolution of metal in a corrosive. Now, active dissolution of metal, what do I mean by that? It is basically the polarization lines, polarization lines are all in the active mode or active polarization is followed for anodic process. Okay. So, that is the condition that if we remove oxidant, we can avoid corrosion rate of the active metal. Now, similarly, let us say if we have copper plus plus ion in iron pipe or iron tank. So, this copper plus plus has got a higher reduction ability. Fine. So, now if we consider copper plus plus, if that ion is present, it can take two electron, it can go to copper and this copper can deposit on the metal surface because it has higher reduction ability. So, this is iron let us say and now what happens this copper is acting like a cathodic site. So, if we have oxygen there this cathodic reaction would happen this reaction can happen those on those small cathodic part and then for this reaction close to that copper deposit anodic reaction or F e minus 2 e equal to F e 3 F e 2 plus this anodic process would happen. So, that the dissolution is localized wherever that copper deposit is happening because of this localized nature localized it leads to heating. So, now again if we remove copper ion definitely it would be helpful because those copper deposit cannot happen and immediately we will have the uh, avoidance of such localized heating. Now, this is also a serious oxidant why because E naught copper plus plus copper is equal to nothing but 0 0.34 volt whereas, E naught F E 2 plus F E is equal to minus 0 0.44 volt. So, we could see that copper ion is a serious oxidant. So, if we remove oxidant like copper ion or iron ion F E 3 plus ion, then we can actually reduce the corrosion rate for active metals and here active metal means the metal follows activation polarization and not going to the passive state or it does not show any active passive behavior in that particular very medium fine. So, their removal of oxidant can help and it can lead to a better corrosion protection or we can have a very low corrosion rate. Now, we will also have a situation where actually presence of oxidant helps in, uh, uh, in achieving a very low corrosion rate and that relates to active passive metal. So, we will discuss that in our next lecture. Thank you.